Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 87 of the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm recording this at 8.36pm on Sunday. Now, uh, I realise it is late on a Sunday, uh, but as I have said many times before, and as I will continue to say to the end of time for as long as this podcast runs, this is Spearhead Sundays, not Spearhead at 7.30am Sundays, all right? I have the whole fucking day to do this thing. And you know what it is? You cunts were too spoiled. I gave it to you. I, I recorded it early for too long. I used to, I used to record it on a, th- on a Thursday or a Friday. And then I would schedule it to drop at 4 a.m. on a Sunday. And then you guys were just like, oh. If it doesn't come out before I wake up on Sunday, then it's late. No, it's not. All right? That's not how the rules work. I make the rules here, not you. Until you're my fucking boss, until until you're paying the bills to keep the lights on in this place. I also don't pay the bills. (laughs) I I still live with my parents. But you get what I mean. All right? You don't fucking own me. Huh? Sneaky Luke Kidgel reference. You don't own me. He's going to hate that. (laughs) All right. Well, all right. So I've had a I've had a pretty good week, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are now into our second week of radio. Um, I don't want this podcast to be the fucking. <laughs> this is what happened. With radio. This. I don't want it to turn into that. But it is becoming a big part of my life. It's fucking um, becoming the main thing that I'm doing at the moment. Just because I want to nail it while we're new. Want to impress the fucking cunts who have the money. Um. Dude, did you see the the article that I was in on uh, news.com.au, the biggest uh, news organization in the country? Let me look it up. Uh, literally, this I bet I could find it on Google by doing this, all right? News.com.au, cunt. I bet I'll come up. I bet I'll come up. I, I didn't come up. <laughs> all right. Funnestnews.com. Oh, because I spelt com wrong. I spelt C O M E. Fucking idiot. Oh, cunt. There I am. All right. Dropping this. This, this is the headline. Dropping the C bomb is becoming an Aussie pastime. So are people even offended by it anymore? Dude. And then there's a big picture of me and the fucking dogs have downloaded my video that I put on YouTube. Oh, listen to this. Listen to this fucking ad that they're making money on and I'm not. You know what these these fucking dogs have done? They've taken my video off YouTube. Right? Shh, I hope you guys didn't hear the brand name, right? Here's my video. <laughs> fucking beat me. You know what these fuck these fucking dogs have done? They've written an article about my video, and if st- instead of linking, just embedding my YouTube video so I get the views in, they've downloaded my video and then re-uploaded it to their website and put a, a censored it and then put a fucking ad in front of it that they make money off and I make nothing from. So, good on you, news.com. You know what gets me is is. It's, they haven't changed it at all, other than fucking butchering it. They edited it down to 40 seconds, and then bleeped every time that I swore. That's the only editing they've done. That's fucking, there's no way that is fair use, man. There's no way that that's legal. But they've just done it, and I'm just gonna have to fucking deal with it. I'm not gonna, end of the day, I'm happy, because I got news.com au the biggest news organization in the country to write an article about me that contains the word cunt more than 13 times now some people would think hey Lewis you know your, your, your comedy special crowdfund went really well that's pretty amazing hey your tour went pretty cool too oh you got a radio show man that's you that's that's gotta be that's gotta be up there in one of your you know your your top accomplishments no all right this article is the best thing that I've ever done in my life, all right? Uh, purely because, let me get a good quote for you. Hi, I'm Lewis Spears, true blue Australian and certified sick cunt. 
he said in a video. <laughs> They're fucking quoting me. All right? And I've counted it. They've written cunt in this article. This, this whole article is about the word cunt, and I'm like the figurehead of it. So, you know, move over. <laughs> move over, George Carlin. Here comes Lewis Spears. Oh, man, it's the funniest shit. So yeah, that, that was the thing that happened to me. I wrote this, I, I made this video, uh, it's on my YouTube channel if you guys want to watch it. It's just a satirical thing of talking about how YouTube discriminates against Australians because in America swearing is offensive, but in Australia, you know, that's just how we talk. Um, so I did like a bit of a, you know, play on a feminism charity type video where I talked about discriminating against Australians and it, and it went really well. And you know what? You know what gets me is the fucking dogs demonetized it. They just proved my point. They were like, yeah, this has swearing in it. Sorry, no ads. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, man. It's very demoralizing. You know what I mean? Like I used to... Oh, fuck it. I'll tell you. I used to be able to count on between $800 and $1,000 a month on YouTube. And now that number has dropped to $100 a month. So I'm now earning 10% of what I was and it's not, my views haven't dropped, you know, like the, the views haven't dropped from what I would normally be getting. They're staying consistent across all of my channels, but uh, the only thing that has changed is this new monetization rule and I don't understand why the fuck they brought it in. It was just to appease advertisers and you know what gets me is the fucking advertisers don't care. They don't care. You know, you see the fucking Jim Jeffrey show on a cable network full of ads and he's saying cunt and making jokes about rape and it's for some reason it's different because it's on TV and he's wearing makeup. You know what I mean? But because it's low budget and it's done by one person in their bedroom on a, on an internet fucking website, <laughs> it's different. It's got swearing in it. It means there's Nazis in it. I don't want my fucking... BMW brand associated with that fucking PewDiePie. I don't know. I don't understand what's going on with this shit. What I do know is that there's fucking double standards all over the place, man. Because, and you know what it is? It's our fault. It's our fault. We've let it happen to us. I'm talking like the creators. It's our fault because we haven't banded together. What there really needs to be is like a unified YouTube creators union or something like that that can really pull some weight because really not even as big as fucking one YouTuber is, no one YouTuber is big enough to have any kind of pull within YouTube. Like PewDiePie couldn't do shit. No one can do anything. The only thing that would actually change YouTube is if all of the YouTubers banded together and were like, hey, yeah, we're not uploading to your website until you fix this thing. And that's not going to happen because uh, if most YouTubers do that, they're going to end up poor because, I don't know, they don't diversify. They just focus, they put all of their fucking coins into one basket or whatever that fuck that saying is, eggs into one bank. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say. Um, but you know, it's it's interesting like YouTube with this shit, like there's very, very clearly different rules for different people because um, other media organizations have banded together and were like, yeah, hey, if you want our videos, you need to give us special privileges. Music videos are a great example of this. The entire music industry was like, hey, we're not going to upload videos to YouTube unless you give us special privileges to do it in the way that we want through this Vivo system that we want to build into your website. Also, while we do that, we're going to build Vivo as a big competitor to you. And YouTube just had to bend over and take it because obviously music and music videos is worth billions of dollars to them. And, um, you know, music videos that are uploaded by rappers on, or, or anybody really now these days, are just full of fucking naked women shaking their ass, which if that was on my channel, demonetized straight away. They're full of drug references, again, demonetized on my channel. Full of swearing, demonetized again on my channel. Just full of, and, and like violence and talking about violence and, and you know, racist words, shit like that. And, and I'm not complaining about these things at all. I'm totally fine with these things. But it's like YouTube has said that they're not okay with these things unless 
they come from, you know, some big corporation, mainstream media fucking thing. And the same thing is with, uh, you know, all of the television show re-uploads, like Jimmy Kimmel and all those cunts. Right? You saw a really good example of that. Casey Neistat had his video demonetized when he was trying to raise money for a charity, uh, whereas Jimmy Kimmel could talk about it on his... I don't even know if you call it a YouTube channel. It's a TV station that uploads videos to YouTube. He can talk about it and they can make money off it because it wasn't it wasn't even Jimmy Kimmel that did this. It was the entertainment company that owns the entertainment company that owns Jimmy Kimmel. Well, like, hey, if you want access to literally thousands of talk shows and high production clips and shit we want special rules and we want all of our videos to be monetized and youtube would just be like yeah i mean we have no power here we want your shit so you can have as much money as you want and that's really what it comes down to and and as a result youtube has started to by necessity fucking um bend over and bend over backwards to these massive media corporations and give them everything they want. And as a result of that, the little guys like us just get fucked. And it's a real shame because that's the backbone of YouTube. And if they keep doing that, people are going to find something else. But until that happens, I'm going to keep uploading there. Uh, and I'm just going to be making 10% of what I will be making. Um, as a result of that, uh, I have started to bring in sponsorships to what I'm doing. So this podcast is going to be the first sponsored uh, edition of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Well, the second actually, but this one is done through a proper podcast monetization thing. Don't worry. I've made sure that I will only ever promo products that I actually fucking like. And the things that I've actually used. And I think I've got something, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'll talk about it about halfway through. All right. And uh, then also, I think this month, I'm also going to be monetizing my YouTube channel with a sponsorship. But to be honest, you know, it's not going to be like a huge fucking thing. It's just going to be a, a little mention at the end of a video. Like I said, I don't want to change my content. I don't want to fucking fill what I do with sponsorships and ads. But also, your boy Louie has got to fucking feed his kids. All right, they're all addicted to crack. Uh, crack's really expensive, and you know when you're buying when you're buying meth for six kids under three, and you got to get them wheat bix too in the morning and school uniforms. I mean, fuck, you got to do a couple sponsorships here and there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, guys, you you know me. I'm not gonna. If I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't be doing it. But that being said, I'm also not gonna fucking promo shit that I think is useless. Anyway, enough about that. Should we get on to uh, what we're what we're all here for? Uh, it's Speared Sundays. Let's hear Lewis fucking rant about a thing that doesn't fucking matter, but still pissed him off enough to think about for four days, and then finally unleash onto your, for some reason, willing ears on the Speared Sundays podcast. All right, I bought a belt. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. I bought a belt uh, online. Which, as, as much as the, the fucking online shopping thing is billed as a convenience, it fucking is not. With clothes, anyway. Everything else, I buy online. I buy camera gear online. I buy fucking... Uh, uh, I buy accessories online, like water bottles. I buy fucking camera gear. I just said camera gear. I buy Alzheimer's medication, because I can't remember... Anything that's happened in the last 10 seconds, as soon as it's out of my mouth, it's fucking into the ether and out of my memories. I buy everything online, all right? But clothes are not convenient to buy online because you cannot fucking try it on. It's just ridiculous, man. I bought a belt and you know how websites, you know what, you know what fucking gets me is it should be illegal to come up with your own sizing guide. It should be against the law. It should be the, the moment you come up with your own sizing guide, your fucking whole clothing brand should be shut down, bankrupt. They should raid the office and kill every employee, all right? We don't need companies inventing their own sizing guide. We need to pick a standard and stick with it. And I know that I'm complaining about this, and I'm a man, all right? I don't know how the fuck women buy clothes because... They're, like a size zero in America is different from a size zero in another country. And then there's, I don't even know, I don't understand how the fuck women buy clothes. Like bra sizes are different depending on what store you shop in. Like an A cup from in fucking 
an A cup in in like England would be like a triple D in Japan, and I don't fucking know how you women buy clothes online without trying it on because as a man, it's fucking impossible for me. So I'm trying to buy this belt, right? It's a belt I've been looking at. I'll be like, you know what? Your boy needs a belt. I want to buy a fucking belt. All right, it was a kind of it was a nice belt. Was it wasn't anything ridiculous, but it was like I would like this belt and I'm going to purchase it with my money. So what I did is I went on their fucking size guide. And I'm like, I want this fucking belt. So I got out one of my belts that I own and I got it and I put it on my desk right here where I'm sitting. Sorry if I just deafened you. I just, I just saw the audio spike up. Probably shouldn't have slammed the desk, but I'm, I'm angry, all right? I fucking laid out my belt and then I got out a tape measure and I measured it. And I looked at the size guide on the belt that I wanted to buy. And it said, yeah, if your waist is a size 34, which is what I am, and I just heard a whole bunch of men gasp and go, 34, what are you, a fucking woman? And then I heard a whole bunch of women go, 34-inch waist, I'm so jealous. (laughs) All right? Anyway, 34-inch waist, I fucking measure it. I look at it, and then I look at the size chart on the website, and it says, if you're a size 34, then you want to get a size 95. And then I said, why the fuck is that number so different? And then I was like, is that in centimeters? Because I'm I'm in inches. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe I'm an idiot. Let me look it up. 34 inches to 95. Two centimeters. No, I can't. If you do 34, you can't do, you can't do, you can do 34 inches to centimeters, but you can't be like 34 inches to 95 centimeters. That doesn't make sense, you idiot. That's being like, hey, can you do 30 millimeters into one liter? That's not how that works, you fucking 34 inches to centimeters. Centimeters. How do you spell centimeters? Centimeters. All right. Centimeters. All right? No, it's 86 centimeters. All right? 34 inches is 86 centimeters. So these fucking cunts are like, yeah, on their website, they're like, yeah, so uh, 34 inches is a size 95 in our brand. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't make sense. But I'm looking at the size chart. This is what you told me to do. I measured my belt, like you said. And now I'm looking at your fucking website. And then I buy the belt. I pay for express shipping. I want my belt tomorrow, right? I ain't, I ain't waiting on a belt. I want this shit now. The belt arrives. Two days later. I'm like, cool, whatever. Paid for express shipping. Two days later, you know, not going to complain. Really excited. I just got home from the radio. I'm really fucked. I got home at like 10 p.m., but I'm like, you know what? I'm excited to try on this belt. I'm going to put it on. So I put on my belt, wrap it around my little 34-inch waist. I go, ooh, looking slim, Louie. <laughs> and then I do it up, and then the belt literally pulls my pants down because it's so fucking loose that it just it just adds more weight to the jeans, and they start to fold downwards a little bit. And I just lost my shit. I was like, I fucking measured it. And then, right, problems don't stop there. I'm like, okay, this thing doesn't fit me. Now, if this was shopping in, in a store, I would try it on and I would go, hey, this belt is this too big. And then the assistant will be like, oh, no worries. That's fine. Let me get a smaller size from the back and you can try that on. And if that one doesn't fit you, I'll have an even smaller size in my hand. And if that doesn't fit you, I'll refer you to an anorexic specialist because you're probably going to be in trouble. You know what I mean? But because I just got this belt and it wasn't, it was just way too big. And even though the fucking size guide said, I was like, sweet. Well, now one I need to return this belt. Two, I still don't know what fucking belt size I am because now whatever kind of change I make in the belt size choosing system is not going to be based on on science, right? It's not going to be based on me measuring my belt and then applying it to your obviously wrong fucking belt sizing chart. So I would just have to take a guess and be like, oh, maybe I'm a 90. 
I'll try a 90. And then if that one came and then that one was too small, then I would have to send that one back. So I look up how to fucking send this thing back. And then I, and there's like a thing. It's like, hey, if you got the wrong size, we'll give you a refund if you take it to one of our stores. And I'm like, okay, sweet. I'll go to one of the stores. I'll just go tomorrow. Then I remember, fuck, now I have a job that I have to turn up to every day. I'm going to have to go after work. So I figure out when they're open late and then I we go to the radio, whatever. I take my fucking belt there in the bag. I'm careful to transport it because it came in a box. It was a nice belt. And I'm like, I don't want to fuck up the box because then they won't take my belt back. They like specifically mention that. Then I get to the store, right? This is like four days later. By the way, they say if you don't return it in 14 days, you're fucked. It's your belt now. (laughs) So I take it to the store. And I go up to the nice lady. And she goes, hello, sir. How can I help you? And I said, you fucking bitch. No, (laughs) No, I didn't. I was like, I got the belt out. Got it out of the box. Showed it to her. It was still wrapped in the plastic. Or, or the plastic protective covers that had it. It wasn't all wrapped in plastic. I gave it to her. I'm like, hey, I just bought this online. It's been three fucking days. I've been raging about this belt. I even tried to just... I thought about putting extra holes in it. But then I was like, no, this is a nice belt. Don't want to ruin it with fucking hammering nails into it. Please, do you have a size smaller? And she goes, no. Nah. I was like, sweet, Awesome. What have you got? And then she comes, she takes it back and she goes, yep, this is in great condition. We can return it for you. And then she brings out the ugliest belt I've ever seen. And she goes, we don't have anything like the belt that you bought, but we do have this one. And I was like, that looks uglier than if two burns victims had a child and somehow their, their, their burns were genetically passed on to that child and the child came out looking like it had third degree burns 10 years ago and then it was born. That's what that belt looks like. I don't want that fucking belt. I want the belt that I bought. I didn't obviously I wasn't an asshole about it. I was just I was just doing this whole burns victim birthing routine in my own head. <laughs> and I was like I don't want this belt. Um but what would be good is can you please bring me a few belts in a few different sizes, I'll try. I'll, I'll try on a few, and then at least I will know which fucking size I am. Then I can get my refund, and I'll use the money you give me to buy my belt in the right size online again. And then she was like, "Yep, sweet, sure." So she gives me some belts, and I find out I'm actually a size 85, not a 95. Now, if let's convert that, let's convert 85 centimeters to inches, and I bet it's not going to come out to fucking 34 inches, is it? Because you would think that would happen. 85 centimeters, two inches. And uh, uh, voila, this is how Matt... Oh, wait, it comes out to 33. (laughs) Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. Oh, man. Well, no, I'm not stupid because I looked at the fucking sizing chart and it said if you were a size 34, then you're a size 95. So... The su- that means the sizing chart is just fucking wrong. So I was right. I fucking knew it. I shouldn't have trusted that fucking sizing chart. So this clothing company doesn't even know how to convert centimeters to inches. I literally googled this shit. 85 centimeters is 33.4 inches, which is basically what I wear in my jeans, but a little bit smaller, which is what you want in a fucking belt. That's just stupid, man. That's the dumbest fucking thing. So yeah, I should have trusted myself. I should have trusted this clothing website. Anyway, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm smarter than this clothing brand, all right? And oh, that's what a waste of my time. We're not even done with the story. Anyway, so yeah, I find out that I'm actually a size 85 because that's 34 inches in centimeters. And I'm like, sweet, cool. So I'm 85. Now I know that. Can I please get a refund? And then I'll just buy the belt online. And then she was like, oh... Um, if you don't take a belt home with you, I can't actually give you your money back. I can only give you your money back if you bought it at this store. And then I was like, well, I did buy it at this store. And she goes, no, you bought it online. And I was like, yeah, okay, what's this store called? And then she was like, oh, it's called Brand. And then I was like, okay, what's the online store called? And she's like, oh, it's called Brand. I'm like, yeah, okay, so, same brand, I bought it from you. Give me my fucking money. Um, 
And then she was like, yeah, look, okay, I can't. And then I was like, okay, well, what if I bought the belt in store, but from a different, in a different location? And then she was like, yeah, we could do that. And then I was like, okay, so I've basically done that. The only difference is I didn't talk to a human. I clicked a button. And then she was like, I'm sorry, sir. I can't give you your money back. Either you take one of the Burns victim baby belts and I'll give you that and we can swap and then I'll give you 50 bucks because the, the ugly ones are a little bit cheaper or you can go home with your fucking belt that doesn't fit you, no money, carry it home, all the way home, trying not to damage the fucking box and the receipts and all the packaging that it came in and then take it home and then you can return it to the online store. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to do the hard option. Fuck you. Obviously, I wasn't an asshole to this woman. It wasn't her fault. I was very nice. In my brain, that's how the conversation went down. So go home. Now I've got this fucking belt still that I don't want. I've tried to return it. They don't have the belt size that I wanted. At least I know what size I actually am. So that's a start. Now, I look into the box and figure out how to fucking return it online. And and it's just... I have to book a delivery driver to come to my house and pick it up, but it only will come between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., precisely when I fucking leave to go to the radio joint. So now I'm going to leave this thing, like, on my doorstep. Also, because the parcel... So the belt comes in a box, right? And then they put that box within a shipping cardboard box. And then they wrap that thing in duct tape... And then it gets sent to you. Obviously, I destroyed the box when it came because that was the only way to open it. And then they go, hey, so we won't accept the belt if you just put it in the box that we gave you. You also have to put that box inside another box. So I had to fucking leave my house and go to Australia Post and buy a new box to put my belt box into, that I would put my belt into, that I would then give to the fucking delivery driver. And I still don't even know for sure whether or not I'll get my money back. Because now I'm fucking freaking out. The delivery is tomorrow. I've worked out that mum's going to give the delivery driver the box. But the fucking delivery driver comes tomorrow and I'm thinking, what if he handles it roughly and then the the box inside the box that holds the belt gets damaged and then they're like yeah sorry we can't take this fucking belt back so it's just the worst fucking thing that's happened to me this week all right that was the belt saga i'll keep you updated next week and we'll see if if i get a fucking refund i probably won't even know actually oh man all right, shall we get into the first ever Spearhead Sunday's sponsorship? Second ever, but the first ever one done properly through a podcast sponsorship fucking thing. Shouldn't say fuck when I'm about to do an advertisement. <clears throat> Hope they don't hear this because I was in... Instru- All right, so let me just tell you the, the backstory on this thing before I start because this is going to be a regular thing. Um, I'm thinking that halfway through each podcast, I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do some ad reads. Uh, Basically, I just read out products that have paid to be on this podcast. And the reason I'm doing that is because the YouTube money has dropped to basically nothing. And the podcast gets more and more expensive to host the longer we go. All right. So where is this thing that I need to read? I've lost it. Hang on. Unprofessional ads. Let me, (laughs) I'll be right back. I've got to find this fucking shit. All right, so uh, the first sponsorship for the podcast is the Dollar Shave Club. Now, I've been told that as this is the first time that they've ever advertised on the podcast, I should keep it exactly to the script. And they've they've literally sent me a script. <clears throat> and uh, so here we go. This is everything they've told me to say, guys. And I'm gonna I'm gonna really I'm gonna I'm gonna nail it. Right. Intro. No, I probably wasn't supposed to say. Oh, they've highlighted things that I shouldn't say. So I shouldn't say intro. (laughs) Guys, I've got the answer to finally make your life so much easier. Since joining dollarshaveclub.com, I don't need to choose between price and quality to get an amazing shave anymore. Dollarshaveclub.com is a no-brainer for an incredible shave delivered right to your door. 
DollarShaveClub.com delivers high quality razors to my home for less than what I used to pay. There's no reason to deal with the hassle of going to the store just to buy expensive razors when you join the club. <laughs> just go to DollarShaveClub.com and pick a razor that works for you from their lineup of amazing blades. That's all there is to it. I get a first class shave with my executive razor, that was underlined, and when I use it with their Dr. Carver's shave butter, the blade just gently glides, just gently glides for the smoothest shave imaginable. Oh, I couldn't imagine a shave better than that. Call to action. Oh, that was highlighted too. Hang on. Here's your chance to see why over 3 million members like me love Dollar Shave Club. Right now, you can get your first month of the club for as little as $5. After that, it's just a few bucks a month. Dollar Shave Club is so confident in the quality and value of all their products, there's no long-term commitment or any hidden fees. There's no reason not to join. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. Um, that's all, everything I was told to say. Now, let me talk about um, what I actually think of it, because these guys actually sent me um, a box of razors. They sent me a box of razors. Uh, it had the executive shave handle, I think what they call it. They sent me the Dr. Carver's shave butter, and then they sent me like a pack of four of their best razors, because I think you can choose three different blade types, and I got the best blades, um, and straight up, it was fucking great, it was actually really, really good, because I was, um, I'm one of those people that just goes down to the supermarket, and I just buy the shittest, cheapest little razors that you can only use once, and they kind of die halfway through you shaving, but then you go, oh, I'm not going to spend more than 20 bucks on razors, and you drag it along your face, and it just fucks you up, but you never learn. I was that person, but um, I was like, oh, because uh, I don't want to advertise anything that I think is shit, so I want to try everything that wants to advertise with me. And I tried uh, the Dollar Shave Club razor. I've only used it once, um, and it was after like a month of me not shaving because I wanted to try it properly. Like you can see in all of the radio videos, I've got pubes all over my face because I can't really grow a beard, but when I leave it for a month... That's like, uh, to give you a perspective, maybe an Italian guy's not shaving for a day. That's me not shaving after a month. So that's what I had going on. Uh, and it was really good. <clears throat> the razors were great. The handle feels really high quality. The Carver's Shave Butter stuff was really, really good as opposed to stuff that foams up and then you can't see what you're doing. I don't have anything bad to say about it, and I honestly think... That I that I would use this as well, and because you you always forget to buy razors, I always do that, or and then you end up reusing shitty ones. I didn't know it was so cheap. I thought it was more than that, and that's the only reason why I haven't signed up to this thing earlier. I knew about it. I didn't know it was five bucks a month. That's cheap as fuck. And then after that, it's it's cheaper. Um. Anyway, so that that's the the Dollar Shave Club. I actually do recommend it. Women, I assume it must be good for shaving your legs as well. I mean, aren't all razors the same? I don't know. But uh, yeah, guys, I recommend Dollar Shave Club. I think it's good. And if you're going to sign up to it, if you want to try it, do it at dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead because then they'll see that the ads are working and then they'll do the ads again. And uh, hopefully I won't end up homeless. All right, so thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring the podcast. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for the raises. They were cool. Like I said before, dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead if you want to get your own. All right, <clears throat> so let's move on here. Man, the worst thing happened to me <clears throat> on the way home from the radio the other night. I had to talk to someone in McDonald's. Yuck. <laughs> Nothing worse than talking to someone at Macca's after like, well, at any time, really. You don't want to talk to anyone you don't know in a Macca's. Especially not at night. I go to this fucking Macca's. And I, I, tried, I tried a new burger. And it didn't taste anything like the create your taste one I used to make. So already we're off to a shit night. And there's this one drunk dude on the phone to his mate. Going, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, you want me to stay? Alright, I'll stay. Nah, bro, I'm coming. Alright, I'll stay. Alright. Alright. 
no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go though, man. I'm gonna, okay, I'm staying. And then went like that for ages. I'm eating this fucking burger. And then I get up to put my rubbish in the bin. And he got up to get his order. And then we kind of like passed each other. And he stops and he's fucking so drunk. And he looks at me and he goes, hey, man. And he's got, he's, he's eating food. He's got food in his mouth. And he goes, oh, man. He's pissed. He's eating food. He's looking at me. And we're in Macca's. I'm hating it. He goes, hey, man. You look like MGK. Has anyone ever told you that? Had to Google who the fuck that was. He's some rapper. I do look a little bit like him, although he looks like he has more money. <laughs> so I just went, nah, man. And then I went and sat back down, finished my chips. And then he goes and sits down. And then I finish my chips, and I, then I go to leave. The guy had left before me. Anyway, turns out I would left quite shortly after him. And we ended up at the same lights. And then he goes, I'm listening to music. And he says something and I ignore him. Don't want to talk to you. Not your mate. Okay. It's 10 PM at night. Listening to some fucking cursor. Not your fucking mate. You're off your face. We met at McDonald's. This is not a friendship and it never will be. All right. And then he tries to say something again. So I take one ear off my headphone. And normally that means you can say something in about three seconds. Otherwise, you're rude as fuck. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> okay? And then he goes, Are you having a good night, man? And I just went, Yeah, man. And then I put my music back on my ear, like the universal symbol of don't fucking speak to me, you peasant. <laughs> anyway, so then the light goes green, and he walks... He starts walking up to me. Like I walked I walked quite fast and then he jogs to catch up to me. So I immediately I'm like, "Okay, this cunt is going to try and rob me." So I turn around and look him in the face and take off my headphones so I'm aware of my surroundings because that's 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 the kind of that's how close he got to me and he was running in that way of, "Okay, this guy's getting in my personal space for a reason and it's not to be friendly." So I turn around ready to fucking I don't know, get punched in the face and then run away. <laughs> and then he looks at me and he goes, oh, you don't like me, do you? And I just looked at him and I went, no, sorry. And then I immediately regretted apologizing for it because I meant it and I didn't want, <laughs> he didn't deserve one. And then he just goes, oh, no, oh man, that's no good. He, he actually got really cut by it. Like he was really sad that he couldn't make friends with some stranger that kind of looks like fucking MGK, whoever that is. And then we get to, we cross, we end up finishing crossing the road and I just lie to him and I'm like, oh, I need to go into the service station. Sorry. And then I go in there and then he stops and waits for me and I try and go into the servo station and then the guy in there is like sorry we're closed and then I'm stuck with this fucking drunken idiot it's like ah oh, fuck and then he goes oh they're closed that's no good hey MGK what were you gonna get from the servo and I just went have a good night bro and I crossed the road in the other direction that I just came <laughs> And then I just waited for him to walk in the same direction that I was. And then I crossed the street and started going in the same direction, but a hundred meters back on the other side of the road. And I was like, fuck, that was the worst experience of my life. The, 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 the level that I will go to to avoid talking to someone for 10 seconds is obscene. If it was an Olympic sport, I would be unbeatable. I'd have the world record and it would just stay there forever of lengths man goes to to avoid speaking to someone else. But I don't regret it because that would have been a shithouse conversation. All right, after that fucking atrocious retelling of a fucking shitty social interaction, shall we get into the worst part of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen? It's time for Miscellaneous Bit at the End. If you don't know, Miscellaneous Bit at the End is the part of the podcast where I... 
read uh, life advice questions that you guys email me. If you would like to send me an email, if you need some advice about relationships or your life or anything, or even if you have just a funny story to tell, or if you've done something horrible to someone else, especially, would love to hear about it, email me at podcast at com. That's podcast at com. Hey, are you fucking listening? I said podcast at com. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so this one, the subject line, or at least I think it's the subject line, it's in all capitals for some reason, because I write these in my notes on my computer, and for whatever reason, this sentence is in all caps. So that either means it's the subject line of the email, or I'm supposed to yell it. Uh, so let's hear what it would sound like if it was me having to yell it. I woke up to getting my ass fingered. Um, I'm pretty sure that was actually the subject of the email. So, I woke up to getting my ass fingered. G'day shit cunt, hope your day's going well. For the love of God, keep me anonymous. You will soon see why this is the case if the subject line isn't a reason in of itself. Okay, so it was definitely the subject line. I should not have yelled, I woke up to get my ass fingered. Um, As of a few months ago, the store I work at picked up a rather attractive female newbie who had been doing the same things I do, and she was the same age as me. Her name's Diana. As I've been around the store long enough to teach her when my boss is too busy to do so himself, this allowed me to chat with her and suss her out a bit as a person. She was into most of the things that I was into, and needless to say, we got along fairly well on her first day. She had given me her number after the fourth day. Ooh, here we go. About a month later, Diana began to get a bit touchy with me when we would talk and look at me funny. I knew she liked me, but I didn't really give it any mind because I was preoccupied with work. Um, she would eventually scale this up from touching my arms to occasionally tapping my ass. Yeah, she's into you. I liked her enough not to get mad or anything about it. She eventually admitted she liked me, and because I don't like talking about sensitive subjects like that over text, I made the horrible mistake of meeting up with her so we could talk about it in person. One thing led to another, and before I knew it, I was fucking ramming her from behind in her bathroom. Good on you, man. I would have picked the bedroom, but, you know, every man for themselves. Despite the fact I initially didn't want to get involved with this girl, yeah, danger zone, man, you work very closely with this chick, so you could really fuck this up, and it could fuck up your job too. But let's, uh, obviously, that's not the only thing that gets fucked in this story. Stay tuned for more at the end of this email. <laughs> One thing that's to know, fucking this girl in the bathroom, blah, blah, blah. Uh, despite the fact I didn't initially want to get involved with this girl, we ended up developing a friends with benefits relationship. Nailed it. We continued to hook up quite frequently, and on a couple of occasions, she'd bring up a proper relationship. I didn't want one because the last couple I've been in were a waste of time and hurt me pretty badly. This set off some warning bells, however, it was far too late. Last week, we hooked up up after going for a pub crawl where she'd been all over me the whole time. After our razzle-dazzle in the sheets, we fell asleep together and all was bliss. Except for when I woke up to Diana's cold hand sliding down my back and her index finger non-consensually inserting itself into my asshole, Without any regard to her feelings or whatsoever, I fucking exploded. Yeah, as you should. I fucking exploded at her and left as fast as I could. She was crying and trying to get me to stay, but I was far too disgusted and angry to care. This prompted her to text me multiple paragraphs explaining herself and wanting me to come back as if we were in a serious relationship. She turned into a psychotic bitch when I didn't respond to anything. I've blocked her out of everything, yet she tries to seep her way in wherever she can, and given we work at the same place, I've ensured I've switched shifts. As such, I've also had to change my number twice and delete my social media. As you could imagine, I'm fucking sick of this shit and need advice as to how I should deal with this because I don't want to have the police involved as I feel it's equally as pedantic as Diana's behavior. And despite her loopy shit, I would feel awful. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Have a shit one. From... I hope this isn't your real name. I'm going to change whatever you've written. From Tim... Don't ask me to be anonymous, just write a fake name, because I almost read this guy's name, and then everyone would have known that's the dude who got fingered, alright? 
No, I'm going to call him Freddy. Because remember that movie, Freddy Got Fingered? This is your name, Freddy. Because, oh, and also he sent me an update email a couple of days later, which said, I don't have the subject line of this. I should find it. What's the subject line? I'll yell it. That'll be funny. Um, ass getting fingered add-on. So, all right, Freddy, what, what's, your, what's your add-on? Um, where have I put it? Here, Okay. Because I'm a dumb dumb cunt, I forgot to add in my cancerous addition to the podcast, The Vital Info. Diana was into some really crazy shit. I'm talking whips and chains, me choking her during sex, etc. And that one time after we went out pub crawling, in order to start sex, she went and cracked an egg on my chest in the middle of the night. What, is she into some farmer role play? Howdy doody, look what the hands laid. Crack it on your chest and choke the shit out of me. About to stick a finger in your ass while you're asleep. What the fuck is up with this chick? With this in mind, it should make more sense to you and listeners why she did what she did. It doesn't. That hasn't helped the story at all. It's like, oh, okay, of course. She's cracking eggs on your chest. Of course she would put her index finger in your asshole while you're asleep. For the record, nothing has changed. And on Friday night, she left a letter on my doorstep that I immediately tossed into my fireplace without thought. Fucking help me. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. You should have taken photos of it, opened it, and and made sure it wasn't a thing about if you don't talk to me I'm going to kill your dog I definitely would have read that shit and and taken photos of it um man okay let's be clear I I know I've been joking a lot through this email but you were sexually assaulted that's what happened to you um Especially, it's. I suppose it would be a little bit different if she was your girlfriend. I don't know why, because you've never. You know what? It's not different. I was gonna say, you know, if it's your girlfriend, <laughs> your girlfriend can't rape anyone. She's your girlfriend. It's, yeah, it's like that's stupid. Um, yeah, dude, what happened to you with sexual assault? Because she did something that you did not consent to and would never do normally while you were asleep, and I'm assuming also kind of drunk. Um, fuck, man. I don't really know what you should do. I, well, look. I understand you don't want to get police involved. Maybe that is the right move. But also, sounds like this chick is stalking you if she's coming to your house and leaving shit on your doorstep after sexually assaulting you and you have made very, very clear that you want nothing to do with her. I would say that now it's probably time to think about going to the police. Maybe you don't have to tell them about her sexually assaulting you, but it could be worth you being like, hey, this woman won't leave me alone. She's acting crazy and she works at my workplace. Can you please go and talk to her? I mean, you know when she would be at work, right? If she works in the same place, I would just go to the police station and say, hey, this psycho that I work with is leaving shit on my doorstep and has forced me to delete social media because she won't leave me alone. That's what I would do, man. Because she sounds like a bit of a crazy bitch and also doesn't seem to understand that what she's done is sexual assault and wrong. Um, yeah, man. I would I would go to the cops because it sounds like you've done the right thing where you've ghosted her and you're just initiated no contact mode. That's definitely the right way to go around, go about breaking up with someone. But if she won't drop it, and if she's leaving shit on your doorstep, man, I would go to the cops. That's fucking scary. I would really consider going to the cops, or at the very least, telling your boss about it, so that he can tell her, hey, leave him alone. At the very least, tell your boss, man. But at, at, yeah, up until the no telling somebody else thing, you're doing the right thing, which is just tell her to fuck off, tell her it's why it's happening, and don't fucking speak to her. But um, if she keeps contacting you, screenshot everything. If she leaves shit on your doorstep, keep it, open it, take photos of it, keep all the evidence, because that shit comes in real handy when you find a fucking headless animal on your, on your porch and you need to prove that it was her, but you burnt all the evidence because you didn't want to read it. So I wouldn't do that, man. I would hold on to that shit. Just don't let it fuck with your head, or at least try. It'd be hard. But yeah, dude, um, I think you're doing the wrong thing by ignoring it at this point. It started off right, but now if she's not leaving you alone, you need to take another step, and at the very least, tell your boss, 
preferably go to the cops. Um, you don't have to tell them about her sexually assaulting you, but you can tell them about her fucking stalking you because that's what she's doing. All right. That was a really bright end to the worst part of the podcast, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? If you would like, uh, I would like an update on this story, by the way, if you're still alive by next week or so, or whenever the next interesting thing happens with it, send an update. The listeners would really like to know whether you've survived this, all right? (laughs) Thanks for emailing in, Freddie. Um, Sorry that you got fingered. All right. So that's the end of the podcast. I wanted to say quickly that I'm going to be in New Zealand this week. My first show is on Wednesday. Um, let me get up the dates here because I bet I'll read them out wrong if I don't. Uh, if I get it, just do it by memory, I'll get it wrong. So I'm doing four dates. The first show is on Wednesday night and that one is in Queenstown. And then on Thursday night, I go to Dunedin. Friday night is Christchurch and Saturday night is Auckland. All right, this is my first New Zealand tour. The tickets are selling pretty well now, except for Queenstown. That's looking like a quiet one, but you know, I do like an intimate show. So we'd love to see you guys in New Zealand. I'm really excited to perform. Um, I'm going to be meeting everybody afterwards. I'm going to bring merchandise and all that kind of shit. If you want to get a t-shirt and you want to get a photo with me, totally down for it. These are going to be small shows because it's my first time in your country and I want to do it properly. And um, I can guarantee you that I'm going to be in fucking peak form because these are pretty much the last shows before my special. So I'm going to be uh, really kicking it in the dick by the time I get to New Zealand. All right. So I would love to see you in New Zealand. If you want to send me an email, uh, podcast at loosebeers.com. If you want to check out the Dollar Shave Club, it is uh, dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. Make sure you use that link because then it actually tells them how much my advertising worked. All right. So thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Give it a rate on iTunes and I will see you next Sunday. Have an incredibly shit one. I hope it's the shittest one yet.